Just the students and good morning class. Good morning, Mr. Sorry. Thank you very much. You can sit down. All right, quickly, uh, firstly, I'd like to go through uh, what we went in, through in our last lesson, what we discussed in our last lesson. Uh, there is, uh, that is on atmospheric pressure. Now, the atmospheric pressure, the value of atmospheric pressure would be about 1.03 if you are using 10 uh, for the acceleration due to gravity. But if you are using 9.8, then your answer will be? Okay, 1.013 times 10 to the uh, minus, not minus, but 5 pascals. So that is the atmospheric pressure. All right, quickly going through what we uh, went through in the last lesson, that is uh, basically the atmospheric pressure. You find that uh, the air has to extend high above us. Atmosphere is simply the uh, layer of gases which has to extend um, above us. Now we find that as it has to extend higher, the force or the weight of gravity must always fall on any object that is placed, uh, placed on the surface of the earth. And that is what is known as the uh, atmospheric pressure. Okay, just because the weight of uh, the atmosphere is falling on this uh, body or the object. Now we also see how we can derive um, that atmospheric pressure because when you are using mercury to measure atmospheric pressure, the height that the mercury will rise will be almost about okay, 760 millimeters or 76, rather 0 0.76 meters. Now, there was also other instruments which can be used to measure atmospheric pressure, right? One of those would be the aneroid barometer. It is aneroid, meaning that it does not use any uh, liquid. You can also use water-filled barometer, but this time water is quite, okay, it has many disadvantages, meaning that it can be 10 meters long. Yesterday, I gave you one exercise and that you calculate that to be about 10 meters. So that means if you're trying to measure the pressure inside a building, that piece of tube must be 10 meters long, and it is not portable to carry. All right, in this lesson, uh, we'll be looking at uh, pressure and how, or let's say, the behavior of these cases will determine the pressure. All right, in a solid, you find that, uh, I'll go through the explanation and then you can copy that. Right, in a solid, you find a strong force of attraction holds the molecules together in a uh, regular structure. So the molecules only have to vibrate to and fro, all right, meaning that they cannot change their uh, position. So in that, we can simply say that they have a definite shape and uh, size. Now quickly go through, okay, that is information on uh, the structure of a solid.
Okay, now we will go to the next uh, piece of information, and that is the behavior of uh, particles, especially in a liquid. <coughs> All right, you'll find that in a liquid, the molecules are close together, and they will, or they still vibrate to and fro. However, they have no enough energy, and that means, okay, they have enough energy, and this prevents the force of attraction from holding them together. So that means uh, the inner liquid, uh, these particles has, or it has a fixed shape and also the uh, rather fixed volume but not a uh, fixed shape. So that is why they can be moved. The next information is on the behavior of particles, especially in uh, gases. Right, you find it, especially in gases, the molecules are well uh, spaced out, and they have enough energy to be free from the attraction from other molecules, right? In this, we can say it is the collision of these gases of the walls of the container that causes or exits uh, some kind of pressure.
All right, now on to the structures of the uh, particles, especially in solids, uh, liquids, and the right in a molecule of solid, you will find that they, that is how the uh, particle would be arranged. They stay in only one place, but have to only vibrate to and fro. So you can quickly, if you want to, just get a sketch of that uh, diagram. to the next information now. Okay, that is molecules in a liquid. They would look something like that. Right, the volume is fixed, meaning that if they are the same amount, it will be same. So that is especially in um, liquids, but you find that uh, the uh, particles are now free to move. And that is the reason why they have to have a, uh, they don't have a definite shape. I will now give you the, uh, the structure of molecules in gases. Right, you find that especially the molecules are further apart from each other and the bonds that are holding them has been broken, meaning that they are free to move.
Right, those are the structures and the behavior of uh, particles, especially in uh, solids, liquids, and the gases. Now we'll, now we'll go through the activity questions. All right, there are only two questions, so uh, pilot teachers, you can also ask your uh, students to go through, probably note down these two questions and then answer them. All right, after that, I'll come back to you and then we'll discuss the uh, questions. All right, the first question, you can see that a rigid container, what do you think happens to the pressure when the gas is heated? Okay, that is one. We okay, quickly copy that question. And there is gonna be question number two. Now on to question number two. Please copy question number two. All right, you find that in a gas syringe, or gas is in a syringe, which is blocked with a piston pushed into the syringe. Okay, what do you think happens to the pressure of the gas in the syringe and why? Okay. I'm sure some of you may have seen a syringe. This one for question two, a syringe is almost quite similar to a uh, pump. Okay, probably some of you may have seen a pump. You may have used it.
Uh, in groups, you can quickly discuss those questions, and then I'll come back to uh, each one of you. Then you can give me your explanation of those two questions. So uh, for the pilot students, uh, your teacher will ask you to probably go into groups, and then you can discuss what happens, uh, what will be the behavior of those particles, especially uh, in those two questions. And then you can give him uh, or her your answers later on. I want to be explained that uh, you have a Suleiman. Uh, maybe you can explain one of those two questions and then we'll uh, you take the first one, this cruise. Okay. You take the second question. Right. You also be the first. Okay, now we will go on to the uh, answers to the questions. That is question number one and two. So we'll have Sulaiman to answer the first question. Um. The pressure in the container will increase. This is because gas particles have gained more energy from the heat and will collide, with, uh, will collide more rapidly or with more energy against the container. We can say that the gas is expanding. 
Okay, very good. So from that answer, you can find that um, the, when the gas is heated in a container, they will take up more energy, and that means they will be under high, uh, very high pressure. And looking at those, uh, the bones, especially in this, they are free to move about because the bones has already been broken. Once you add heat, that means they will have to move further and or faster enough. So that is why we can simply assume that uh, they are under high pressure. Very good. Okay, we'll go on to the second question. The pressure in the syringe is increased because the mold particles are compressed into a smaller area. Michael, what is your explanation of that question? The pressure in the syringe, it increases due to the piston being pushed. The piston causes a high pressure by compressing the gas particles. If it compresses, if it compresses it, keeps on compressing it, it can also turn the gas into a liquid. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> looking at this, okay, those answers are quite correct, or both of them are simply correct. When you are compressing the piston, you are simply making the particles to vibrate much faster. So that means they will have to exert the force of, let's say, pressure against the wall of that uh, syringe. So looking at that, uh, simply from my last uh, explanation of the particles, especially in gases, uh, they are free to move. But sometimes you find it in an open air where um, these particles are not being squeezed or compressed. They tend to move about. That is the reason why we have to have low pressure. Now looking at a wind that is formed. Okay, winds are formed because when you heat an area, you are simply making that air move further apart from each other. But because they are not whole in an enclosed space or container, uh, that area is simply under low pressure because we have less uh, particles. That is the reason why the more cooler air from the outside, which are having more particles, can have high pressure. And that is why it has to move in and then uh, through what is known as convection current. And that is why we have wind. Okay, that is in relation to uh, the air pressure. Okay, when we heat that in an enclosed container, the pressure is quite high because the particles cannot move away from each other. Okay, that is why the container has to come under very high pressure. All right, so very good. Now that brings us to the end of the lesson. Uh, in our next lesson, we'll be basically going through and then discussing something on electricity and looking at, at a simple set of use in electricity and basically defining the column uh, the Coulomb and also the amps and voltmeters. Okay, with that, our keyword for today is simply gas pressure. Good afternoon, pilot teachers and students. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. All right, thank you. You may sit down.